Hello, and welcome back to the fourth section of this video course, Creating Buttons with Modular Classes in CSS3. Modular and reusable CSS is the key to running organized, concise CSS that won't make you want to pull your hair out. It's a thing of beauty when you can add the class of button to an anchor element no matter where that anchor element is in your markup and have it transform into a button. That is reusable. Classes that can be used anywhere and don't have to be qualified by parent elements as long descendant selectors. Modular kind of refers to the ability to add variation to the button by adding another class to it. So one element can have two classes that come together to form something very different. A good example of how to write modular and reusable CSS is by creating buttons. But this concept should be applied everywhere across all components of your website. We have a lot to go over in this section while building our buttons. Modular CSS and multiple classes will be the first two videos before we switch gears and talk about how selectors can overrule each other in the specificity rules video. We'll then get into CSS3 pretty heavily with transitions, transforms, and gradients, and we'll go through every step of styling a big call to action button. In this first video, we'll start creating buttons with modular CSS classes. We'll find out what exactly is modular CSS and why it's useful. But first, let's explore the different button types used on this site. Up at the very top, we have our ginormous call to action button. If we scroll down a little bit on the home page, we have our basic buttons. These are like these modern ghost buttons with a nice hover state. If we go over to the movies page, we have that same standard button. It's just got a different color to it and positioned a little differently. And that appears in all three movie sections. So what we're going to build out in this first video is these standard buttons at the bottom of all three columns. So if we close the final site out and we look at our existing site, so here's our starting point, and we have a bit of a ways to go here, but it should be pretty easy work. Let's jump into our HTML, and let's add the class of button to all three of these anchor elements at the bottom of each column. So we'll say class equals button save that out. Jumping down to the bottom of our CSS, let's add a big Superman comment and give it the name buttons. This is where all our button styles are going to go. What we want to do is we want to create the selector button. And all of the stylistic properties that are shared across buttons will go here. We won't put any positioning properties in the button selector because buttons could be positioned anywhere. So let's start by adding a border. We'll go with two pixels solid and this dark gray color. We'll also make the color of the text the same dark gray color. So we'll save that out. We'll switch back over and refresh the browser. And it's starting to look like a button. So we need to add some padding. So let's use the two value padding shorthand. And we'll say 10 pixels top and bottom, zero left and right, because we're going to end up centering the text in a moment. But let's also change the display property to block, because these are inline elements, and we want them to behave like block level elements. And there you go. So now we have to add some text level properties, like centering the text. But first, let's add a font family. We'll go with Arial, you know, your typical sans serif stack, Arial, Helvetica, sans serif. We'll also align the text in the center of the element. We'll make the font weight bold. And then we'll use another property called letter spacing. And we'll go with 1.5 pixels. If you're not familiar with letter spacing, it does pretty much what you think it does. It creates horizontal space between each letter. And there we go. We have our button elements. There's no hover state. We'll get to that in another video. If we go over to the movies page, What we can see our learn more links on this page need to be buttons as well. So let's jump over to that markup and let's do the same thing. Each anchor tag at the bottom of this page or at the bottom of each movie section, we'll add the class of button. We'll save that and refresh it and we get a button instantly. You know, it sort of works. We have a button, but not entirely. They look like buttons, but they are the wrong color and too wide and not positioned to the right. And the text doesn't contrast well with the background, especially in the darker sections. So there's some fixing up to do, essentially because these buttons are different than the ones on the home page, which were full width buttons. 
So to sum up, in this video we learn how we can create a class to make pretty much any element located anywhere look like a button. In the next video we'll pick up where we left off to fix these buttons and look at how we can get even more modular and add multiple classes in order to vary the buttons.